I see you've got dressed up for this occasion. Does that perhaps show how important this cup tie is to you and the club? Yeah, 100%. This is the, the biggest game of my time here at Sligo, if not in my career as a whole. Wow, really? So this competition means that much to you? Yeah, of course. Getting to this stage of the competition, it's a, a real achievement and the boys should all be proud. To be fair, Andrew, getting to this stage of the competition was expected of you. Regardless, how far do you realistically think you can go? Well, we, we've got this far. I don't, I don't see why we can't go one step further and lift the trophy. With that said, you haven't beaten Waterford in seven competitive matches. What makes you think you're going to end that run today? Waterford? Sorry, that there must be some mistake. We're playing Shelburne today, aren't we? This, this is the press conference for the EA Sports Cup final, right? No, this is the press conference for the Extra.ie FAI Cup quarter final replay. What? Seriously? No, no, nah, you, you're having me on, aren't you? Ah, oh, You mean I got my suit out for a quarter final? What a joke. Jeff! Get Sandra on the phone. Tell her she's sacked. Now I need a new bloody PA. Sorry, you, you can edit all that out, can't you? Um, no. We're alive. Oh. Welcome back to episode 56 of World Tour on Football Manager 2021 and as you will probably have gathered we are having a, a double cup episode today so we have the game in the quarterfinal replay of the FAI Cup against Waterford and the big one the EA Sports Cup final against Shelburne. Since the last episode where we finally defeated Shamrock Rovers in the cup semi-final, we played Finn Harps in the first round of the Irish Cup. We beat them 3-0. We then lost 4-3 to the fellow EA Sports Cup finalist Shelburne, drew 1-1 with Dundalk, defeated Galway United 2-0 in the second round of the FAI Cup, played a few friendlies, won them all. They were all against lower opposition, to be fair and then played the cup quarter-final against Waterford. We were 1-0 up. Unfortunately, we succumbed to a goal from them and it ended 1-1. So it is the cup quarter-final replay against Waterford as the first game today. So here we are, first game of the episode against Waterford. They had actually gone 15 days without a match until the first tie of the, the quarter-finals or the, the, the original quarter-final match. They hadn't played for over two weeks, so perhaps it was a bit of rustiness that led us to, to get the draw, but hopefully we can move on to another cup semi-final today with a win against Waterford. Now, we are going to make a change to this squad that we've got here. We're going to take Alberkus off. I've told him that he, he's going to be rested for a few games because he, he is very tired, so Rooney is going to come on for him elsewhere. In the side, we will obviously take Albertus off the bench as well to make sure he gets a, a full and proper rest that he deserves. We are going to move Buckley into the ball win midfield role. He'd been dropped because of a suspension, as had O'Malley in the advanced playmaker role. So we'll move Dara Fox onto the bench and we'll also move, no, we'll leave power off. So, starting lineup for the first of the cup ties is. Trevor Murphy in goal, Rossi at right back, Marn and Rooney in central defence, Max Murphy at left back, Thomas Alua is the right winger today, Buckley and O'Malley in the centre of midfield as I already said, and then Luigi Milani on the left wing, Danny Morrissey with Thomas Breen up top. So team talk time and I'm going to say we're the underdogs here and that suits us down to the ground, let's go and cause an upset. So the, as the teams are leaving the tunnel, a bit of background on Waterford. So they are currently third in the league, but they could be hitting a bit of a, a poor run. They lost their last league game against bottom of the table Longford Town. So this could be a great time for us to face them as we have the ball deep in their half. Ball in the box. Morrissey needs to turn, plays it to Alua. It's a shot and it's somehow squeezed past the goalkeeper. And Thomas Alua has given us a very early goal to start this game. Three minutes in and we are already 1-0 up. A nice little cartwheel 
inaugural celebration to top it off from Alua. Umali with the ball into the box, defender misses the header, comes to Morrissey, takes his time, finds Alua in tons of space, and then the goalkeeper should be very disappointed with that. It seemed to go through his hands and into the back of the net. Now, this tie doesn't normally have many goals. That's averaged one goal per game in the last five matches between the two sides. So, could, could we just win 1-0 today? With our defence, probably not. But we have the ball once more. It was Murphy passing to his namesake, the goalkeeper, big Trevor Murphy. Now it's Rooney. Back to Trev. There's, uh, Max Murphy's in space on the left, but Rooney decides to try and find Alua with a very audacious pass and gives the ball away. Now Judge, top scorer for Waterford, adds to his tally for the season, his 16th goal of the season. And Patrick Judge gets Waterford back on level terms in this replay very disappointing from Rooney. Rooney is to blame for that goal 100%. So we reach half time and it's still level. It's it's one all. It's been quite an even game so far. Um, not too much to complain about. I'm going to try and encourage them to go out there and get one more goal to win this for us. And we'll take a look at the tactic screen, see how everyone's doing. Buckley's on a yellow card, so something to look at there. 6.3 rating for Conor O'Malley is awful, so he is going to come off at half time. We'll bring Dara Fox on for him but I think we'll just make that one change as we head in to the second half. We are of course unbeaten in three competitive games and we've only lost one of our last seven so we are in a, a good run of form. Hopefully we can we can continue it with a, a goal in the second half but we have an injury to deal with for the time being. Milani is injured so George Kearney is going to come on for him in our second substitution of the game. Free kick from the left, Fox to take it. In towards Rooney, headed away by Kelly, but Murphy is gonna get that for us. Plays it back out wide to Fox, another chance for him to get the ball into the box. Dara Fox skips past the defender, comes into the box, ball in, Alua's there! And it's 2-1, Thomas Alua with his second goal of the game, a beautiful assist from Dara Fox, a nice little dribble past the defender, and then finding Alua in the center of the box, and it is 2-1 to Sligo Rovers. Could we be on course to beat Waterford for the first time since last February in game? Fingers crossed. I wouldn't mind another cup semi-final, but our goal scorer is going to have to make way because he is struggling for fitness out there and we do need him for the, the cup final. Um, in fact, he's not going to make way. Yes, he is. Morrissey is going to drop to right wing and then we will bring Gertlicker on for the last 17 minutes or so up front in place of Thomas Alua. Chance for Waterford possibly. McDonald with the throw, gives it to Judge. Stokes with the ball in. Kenny's there with a the header and that's just over the bar. Corner. Can we get uh, another goal to consolidate our position in the lead? The ball is headed away to Breen. Fox with another chance to get the ball in. He plays it in and that's going to be easily collected by O'Shea. There was no Alua to get on the end of that ball that time. And O'Shea is going to launch this towards Kelly who looked like he could have been offside there it's nodded on to Gray and Gray with the easiest to finish this but it is disallowed it was offside my hunch was correct here's the replay I don't know why it's showing me that because oh oh yeah he was offside I thought Kelly was offside but obviously Gray was offside as well so it doesn't really matter in the end we've got five minutes to survive and hopefully book our place into another cup semi-final but Waterford have, might have something to say about that Ball forward, headed away by Marn. Now Buckley's got it. It'd be great if we could get a third. Rossi plays that to Fox. Now Gertlicker, nice one-touch passing from Fox. Again, another great pass. Morrissey's through, Morrissey scores. Danny Morrissey with his 14th goal of the season has given us the two-goal cushion that we so desired. And Sligo Rovers could be, I'm not gonna definitively say it, but we could be heading to a second cup semi-final. What is going on in the cup competitions this season? We're already through to one final against Shelburne in the EA Sports Cup. And if things stay the same, we are heading to a cup semi-final in the FAI Cup, which means the possibility of a final, which would mean European football, possibly, for next season. But we'll not get ahead of ourselves, as I already am. And the full-time whistle has blown. We have won 3-1 in the quarter-final. And I'm going to outstretch my arms and say, people had written us off today, and you proved them all wrong. Well done on a great result. 
So elsewhere in the cup, Shamrock Rovers were beaten by Bohemian. So we could be playing either Bohemian or Cork City in the next round of the cup. That is a big scalp there, Bohemian beating Shamrock Rovers. That's one of the more, more difficult teams knocked out of the competition. Fortunately, that injury to Luigi Milani isn't a big one, although saying that he might actually miss the cup final. He's going to be out for between two and three days with a bruised ankle. He probably is going to miss the cup final, unfortunately. And the draw for the semi-final of the FAI Cup has already been made. We will be facing Cork City in the semi-final, and I feel that is a, a very much a winnable game. We could be facing, if we beat Cork City, we could again face Shelburne in the final. They are facing Bohemian in the other Cup semi-final. So it's time for a team meeting ahead of the big Cup final. Um, I'm going to ease expectations, I think, because they're not expected to win. Um, what do I say? I'm going to say you don't get to play in a cup final every day, so I want you all to embrace the occasion and hopefully come home with the trophy. Ooh, uh, Derek Meany's looking wary and he said, we're all giving everything we've got, but I don't think it's reasonable to ask that of us right now. Sven Gertlich is insistent. Cantwell's determined, which is nice. A few players looking encouraged. Luke Ford and Mark Brady are furious. That's probably because they're not going to get played today. Um... I'll say that's the sort of overall reaction I was hoping for, although I respect those of you who don't agree with me. Uh, overall, I think that's that's gone quite well, that team meeting. Hopefully that'll show itself on the pitch against Shelburne today. So here we go. Cup final day has arrived. Sligo against Shelburne. Can we pull off the, the impossible, a miracle it would be if we were to beat Shelburne today? We have only won one of the last 14 games against today's opposition and we are going to have to make some changes it looks like for this game Alberkis is going to come in um, for Rooney he's obviously our best centre back or at least one of our best centre backs and we can't be without him for such an important game and also he needs to be rewarded for the fact that he stayed with us despite us going through some tough times so also O'Reilly is in at left back for Max Murphy who unfortunately is too tired for this one and Milani hasn't recovered from that injury picked up in the last match. So he isn't going to be able to play in the cup final either. George Kearney replacing him. Morrissey too disappointing for him to miss out. Gertlicke is going to come on for him. I don't want to have anyone that is tired on the bench either. So there's not even going to be room for them on the subs bench. Jack Cantwell is not going to come in for Milani. Christopher is going to come on the bench for Milani. And then... Our substitute striker is going to be Dara Kenny, the youngster who has scored uh, a few times for us in competitive games. Not really had much of a chance this season, but we'll see if he needs to be used. Hopefully not. Hopefully Gertlicker and Breen can do the job for us. And I'm expecting big things from Thomas Alua as well. We will stick with the pressing possession tactic for the start of the game. We'll see how it goes. And the cup finals here. It's time. It is time. To possibly pick up our first silverware with Sligo Rovers. Of course, we did win the first division, but that doesn't really count. So I know that we there is a former Sligo player that plays for Shelburne, Ronan Coughlin, but he hasn't actually made the squad for today. So that's quite quite nice because he was a difficult player, or he would be a difficult player to come up against. So team talk time, and we are going to pump our fists. No, we're not. We're going to outstretch our arms and say, if we carry on today where we finished last time out, the trophy will be ours, and we will be bringing the EA Sports Cup back to Sligo for only the third time in our history. So as the team lineups come up on the screen, uh, a bit of a, a statistical look into the past meetings between these two sides. Shelburne have scored three goals, at least three goals, in each of the three of their three appearances against Sligo Rovers, their three past appearances, the most recent ones. I, I messed that sentence up completely, but you get the gist of it. They're also... They've won six of the last seven games too. So they are a very difficult opposition to come up against. We'll see how we get on with our possession pressing, as I said, for the first 15 minutes or so. We have the ball at the back. Hopefully we're not going to make a mistake. They seem to be very, very pressured at the moment, my players. But when Marley's got it, can he bring some sort of calm to us? Breen looking for Gertlicker, intercepted. And now Shelburne with possession. O'Connell with the ball over the top, looking for Murphy. And that's cleared, hooked away by Alberkis. 
And now Kearney has won the ball in an advanced position. Can he get a ball into the box? You can. Gertlicker's there. We're 1-0 up. We're winning in the cup final. Sven Gertlicker has got the opening goal of the game. It's just over a minute into the match. And we have taken the lead. Kearney winning the ball back from Boylan on the left-hand side. Plays a beautiful ball in. And Sven Gertlicker, who only came into the squad today because Danny Morrissey was lacking a bit in conditioning, has scored within a minute. Now the bad thing about scoring so early is that that is going to give so much so much passion to the Shelbourne players to not get embarrassed today, or at least it should do, but we do have a throw in in an advanced position once more. Umali with the ball now, looking for Buckley and that is an awful pass. He could have just given a goal away himself there. Markey is advancing through on goal, it's blocked, but Markey's going to get another chance to get a ball in possibly. He plays it back to Boylan instead now to O'Connor, to Murphy or Burkis intercepts nicely. The ball was played straight to him, to be fair and Alberkus has the ball again from the goalkeeper long ball forward towards Gertlicker headed down by their defender I think and now McCauley comes away with it for Shelburne Murphy back to O'Connor now Markey it'd be great if we could get this cleared guys power on the left back to Markey ball in headed away by Mann Olua heads it further and now could it be a counter-attacking opportunity for us now Gertlicker advancing through with the ball plays it across the field to O'Malley O'Malley shoots and Connor O'Malley has got a second we're only 14 minutes in not even that and Connor O'Malley has put Sligo Rovers two goals to the good against a team that we've only beaten once in 14 matches they're unbeaten in the last six games, six competitive games. The game that they lost was in the Europa League qualifying round, so that doesn't really count because the caliber of team that they were playing, I think it was Maccabi Tel Aviv, are so much higher than the Irish League. As the ball's in again and Gerlicker has hit the post, we nearly went three goals clear with less than 25 minutes played. There is something crazy happening with this Sligo Rovers squad and I am all here for it. Murphy with a goal kick plays it short to Mann looking for the pass finds Alberkus long ball forward searching for Gertlicker intercepted by Dykes and Shelburne can come forward with the ball now O'Connor bad pass from him but he gets it back now McCauley need to make sure we don't let him get through but McCauley's through McCauley shoots and it's a great save from Trevor Murphy it was straight at him straight at his foot and he just managed to turn that to the outside of the post and out for a corner kick to Shelburne it's O'Connor with the ball in headed away by Alua nicely and Breen can just smash that clear as you see me there in my suit on the touchline I did change my, my character's attire as well for this game well it, he was also wearing it for the, the previous game but that's because of the confusion around the cup games as Kearney has found himself through on goal and he just just manages to skew that wide we are we are so up for this game it is unreal I can't believe that we're 2-0 up but Shelburne with something to say about that possibly Boylan ball into the box McCauley was there it went over everyone and it's gone right over to the left hand side now Power with the ball now Markey back to Power ball in Alberkis heads that away gets above McCauley there fortunately but Power with another chance to get the ball in McCauley's there again but Rossi heads it away nicely now Markey ball in this time Brady's there and there's nothing we could do about that a volley in to the back of the net from Dermot Brady and Shelburne get a route back into this game as we head towards half time but Rossi with the ball in headed away by Dykes and we need Mann to get there first he looks like he is he does get there first now O'Reilly can we get our two goal cushion back before half time Alberkis ball over the top finds Breen it's Thomas Breen it's Thomas Breen his 10th goal of the season Thomas Breen has restored the two goal advantage for Sligo Rovers here Shelburne must have thought that they were going to be able to come back I mean they still could but Thomas Breen with 30 seconds until the half time whistle has just smashed that past the goalkeeper at his near post he'd be very disappointed to have conceded that Alberkis showing exactly why he was brought back into the team for such a big game with that beautiful assist Virgil van Dijk-esque assist from Sigurdas Alberkis ball over the top Thomas Breen with the finish half time we're winning 3-1 and I mean um, I'm just I'm gobsmacked outstretched arms I'm going to say I'm very pleased with the performance keep it going lads I don't know where this performance has come from but I'm not going to complain looking at everyone's condition they seem okay and rating wise they are too I don't think I'm going to make any changes for the time being I just want more of the same in the second half please lads I, 
a, we, we could be about to win a cup we could be about to win something a, a top tier something as Alua is looking very tired out there unfortunately we but fortunately we do have Stephen Christopher on the bench so he is going to come onto the field for Thomas Alua at right midfield as we have half an hour left of this game surely we are not going to throw this away as I say that Shelburne have a chance O'Connor to McCauley now it's O'Connell forward to Murphy Markey cleared by Buckley pumped clear Breen is advancing through the goalkeeper's come out Breen surely oh, he shoots it straight at the goalkeeper he's still got the ball though Breen can he get a ball in the box he can O'Malley's there Kearney it's four four one George O'Kearney with only his second goal of the season. I don't know why I put an O before his surname either. Maybe I'll have to change that. Maybe I'll have to nickname him George O'Kearney because I've said it in a cup final. It must be true. But Breen, I thought the chance was over. Played it across. O'Malley knocks it down. And Kearney, first time, side-footed into the back of the net. 4-1 to Sligo. And I need to lie down. It could... Oh, we've got, we've got a free kick. Christopher, ball in. Or Berkis. Oh, my God. What is happening? What is going on? Sigitas. It's five. It's 5-1. We're winning 5-1 in a cup final against a team that we haven't beaten. And I know I've said it like three times now. We haven't beaten them in so long. We've only won one of the last 14 games against Shelburne. I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand. Okay, we're 15 minutes to go. And we've got a couple of players that are lacking in condition we're going to bring wells on for man for the last 15 minutes and then we're also going to take buckley off and bring on oh who do we bring on we move o'malley to the ball in the field role and then we'll bring on sam verdon it's got to be sam verdon he's got to play some sort of part in the cup final as brady has a shot on goal and that's a great save from trevor murphy managing to keep it at just one goal for shelburne not that it really matters now because i can't see them getting four goals in the next 15 minutes we, of course, no longer have any more substitutions to make. So it is all down to the players on the field as McGuinness plays a goal kick forward. Bennett plays that to Gertlicker for some reason. Now Rossi with the ball. Over the top, Christopher through on goal. Christopher shoots and it's blocked and out for a corner kick to Sligo. Could we, could we make it six? I don't know. I can't believe I'm saying that sentence. But could we, as Christopher just answers that with a, a stern no. I'm just going to pass the ball across the, the byline and into the goalkeeper's hands as Verdon has got the ball now plays it to Gertlicker nice pass from him to Christopher Christopher shoots and it's blocked again Christopher with quite a few opportunities or at least two opportunities in the last 10 minutes or so to get that sixth goal for Sligo as he plays the ball into the box and that is headed away by Boylan and now Brady has it obviously the goal scorer in the first half just before half time when it looked like Shelburne might get back into this game not to be so far and Wells performs a beautiful sliding tackle to fairly win the ball with five minutes left in this cup final we have the ball in their half near their corner flag and we throw it away now McNally has it for Shelburne plays it back to O'Connell now Brady back to O'Connell and Boylan with it be nice if we could get a sixth I, I, to be fair I just don't want us to concede anymore as Brady gives the ball very kindly to our left back now it's O'Malley back to O'Reilly headed away by Wilson and Verdon has got it not our Verdon their Verdon Adam Verdon been looking at him as well actually um, in scouting report he looks a decent player and he plays the ball back to O'Connell just slowly building it up Shelburne they probably know the game's away from them as Dylan Barnett gets what is surely another consolation goal for Shelburne. It makes it 5-2. Very disappointed from Murphy, though. He was beaten at his near post for that one. But in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter because there's the full-time whistle. Here is the trophy presentation. The Sligo players all walking up to collect their medals and to finally lift the trophy. You can, see, you can just see me at the back there in my suit. And here we go, here is the moment. I pass the trophy to our captain and the fireworks are about to go off. There it is, it's an EA Sports Cup victory for Sligo Rovers. We have won our first piece of top tier domestic silverware in Ireland as the players do their lap of honor with our new trophy. The third time in our history as <laughs> Trevor Murphy loves, he loves a cartwheel. I'm pretty sure he did that in, in the first division 
when we when we won the league the, the third time that we've won this competition in our history uh, what an occasion I'm going to outstretch my arms and say congratulations that was a good performance out there I had I, honestly when I started this video started recording it I had no expectations of lifting the trophy whatsoever so not not that big uh, amount of money not that big of an amount of money I should say for winning the EA Sports Cup but still £28,000 isn't anything to be to, to sniff your nose at and we've won we've won the EA Sports Cup I've pleased the board apparently they didn't see it as an important competition but it's it's still a trophy at the end of the day we beat Shamrock Rovers we beat last year's winners in the semi-final and we feature a little bit in the the EA Sports Cup review also we were the biggest overachievers in the competition obviously winning it when we were thought to have no chance and then we also appeared in the best match of the competition as well defeating Derry City by four goals to nil so now <laughs> If it feels wrong we've just won a cup competition but we are now going to look ahead to the next episode and we are definitely going to feature the Cork City FAI Cup semi-final game I'm not sure whether the St Pat's Athletic game will be postponed as it is only a couple of days before the semi-final but we'll do one of the league games and the cup semi-final game in the next episode but that is it for this episode I hope you enjoyed it if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to get all my content when it comes out, hit the notification bell to stay notified, and I'll see you next time. 5-2. I can't... Uh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. How, how have we won 5-2?